over the last handful of years, I've used a bunch of sleeping pads. Obviously, choosing the right pad is important as it can make the difference between a comfortable night's sleep and a restless one. So in this video, I'm going to talk about the sleeping pads that are behind me here. A few that worked, others that haven't. Let's do it. So there are a bunch of factors to consider when looking for a sleeping pad, such as weight, size when packed, your sleeping style, the R value for insulation, durability, inflation ease. But I've also learned that sacrificing maybe a few of these things is not the end of the world to be comfortable. So just for reference here, I'm about five foot nine and a half inches or 177 centimeters, and I weigh 150-ish pounds, and I sleep all over the place from my side to my back to my stomach. So I feel like I'm a pretty good tester when it comes to sleep systems. All right, so let's start with the most uncomfortable way, um, and that is using no pad at all. Yep, you heard that right. So I did a lot of fast packing and leaving the pad at home to save on weight and space was a popular move in my book. So back in 2015, I raced the Tour Divide and I didn't bring a pad. And I actually, most of my races in early bike packing times were without one. But of course, as we all mature, um, I realized that sleeping pads would have aided in more sleep, uh, better recovery, and have kept me warmer during those experiences. So I no longer go this route, but I'm not saying that you shouldn't. I think there's a time and a place for everything, but one thing is for certain, you can't beat that price point. So before we get any further, I just wanna let you all know that this video is partially supported by TerraVal Tires. What do you look for in an all-around gravel ride and race tire? We probably agree it should roll fast, corner confidently, and offer a no-stress tubeless setup. TerraVal designed the Cannonball with all of these features in mind. The Cannonball comes in a variety of durable and light and supple casings, both in 650B and 700C options. So to learn a little bit more about the Cannonball, click on this card right here or find the link below. So the natural progression from no pad was to try to find the lightest one. And that's this thing right here, the Climate Inertia X-Lite, which comes in at 182 grams and packs to 5.5 to 2.5 inches or 14 by six centimeters. It has an inflated dimension of 42 inches by 18 inches or 107 by 46 centimeters. That's a lot of weight and space saving compared to regular size pads. Plus it takes very few exhales to inflate the pad, making it very convenient in that regard. The idea is that when you lay on it, it basically hardens up and maps to your body, your butt, your hips, shoulders, and head. The problem here is that this pad is very thin. It only inflates to 1.5 inches or four centimeters. So when you toss and turn, you quickly find the ground. And if you move like me, well, you find yourself kind of off the mapping area entirely. Plus with the short pad and lack of R value, I'd quickly find myself cold at night, even during the summer. That said, the holes in the pad here are designed to actually help increase the loft of your sleeping pad if you either put it under or even inside, which definitely will help warm you up a little bit, but it wasn't enough for me, and I have since retired this pad altogether. So getting into a full-length sleeping pad, the Sea to Summit Ultralight Insulated Air Mat comes in at 370 grams with a dimension of 72 by 21 inches or 183 by 53 centimeters, with two inches or five centimeters of thickness in the widest spots with its air sprung cell technology. So this pad is great because, well, it's a full-length pad, keeping me relatively warm during the summer. The biggest drawback here was, well, the thickness. Depending on, say, temperature fluctuations or simply maybe not blowing it up enough, uh, I found my hip would basically kind of sink into the ground uh, when I was tossing and turning at night. Although when I was on my back, I felt very secure and supported, but, well, I'm never just on my back. One notable feature here is that the fabric itself does not absorb as much dust or dirt or debris, keeping it relatively clean, which I think likely helped prevent any punctures as I have yet to have any with this pad. Uh, it definitely is a little bit more flimsy of a pad, but if you are a back sleeper, it's definitely a great option. So the Decathlon 4 class has seen a lot of use over the last two seasons, and it's held up really well, but it certainly is a little bit more bulky than than other pads coming in at 475 grams. The four class inflates to 70.9 by 20.5 inches or 180 by 52 centimeters. And it comes with eight long air channels about 2.2 inches or 5.5 centimeters thick. The channels also come with a few sticky spots on 
the top here so that it will keep you positioned on the pad. This pad was really comfortable keeping me centered in it most of the time and providing very sufficient thickness during most of the night. One of the only issues I did recognize with this pad was when I was on my hip and I encountered one of these grooves inside the channel, it would basically hit the ground. The pad has an R value of 1.6, so definitely not the warmest pad out there, but it did a decent job for warmer weather months or trips in Southern Arizona during the winter. Plus, it packs down exceptionally well for its price tag of under 40 USD. One thing I really would like to see is an improved intake and outtake valve that is kind of on the backside of the pad. But overall, it's held up great with no leaks or issues. And while Decathlon may have discontinued this pad, it's kind of hard to tell, it is still available with some online retailers. So if you are looking for, in my opinion, the best budget pad out there, get it while you can. All right, my favorite pad of them all, the Thermarest Neo Air X Lite. It just ticks all the boxes for me, especially paired with Thermarest's Vesper quilt, but I'll leave that for a different video. The Neo Air X Lite packs well and comes in at 368 grams. The pad inflates to 20 by 72 inches or 51 by 183 centimeters. But I would say the best thing about this pad is, well, it's thick. You got a three inch or a 7.6 centimeter thickness and an R value of 4.1 paired with a say 30 degree bag. I was not cold once this year, even when temps dipped into say the upper 20s. So the pad did get one puncture after neglecting it after I was blowing it up, uh, long story, but I ended up patching it and their provided patch has held up great ever since. I have noticed the pad maybe retains dirt, but it is a softer outer, which made for very comfortable sleeping conditions, almost mimicking, say, a sheet, which definitely proved to be comfortable when I was just, say, in boxers and a t-shirt at night. The valve also ensures that you never over-inflate the pad, which I appreciate, and it was a cinch to remove the air. The price point of 209 USD is steep, but I've had countless uninterrupted nights of sleep with this pad, so it's going to be hard not to pack this thing going forward. So I've also used a few now discontinued sleeping pads, many of them from Big Agnes, including this one, the uh, Big Agnes Air AXL, with success. But Logan mentions that he has popped a bunch of these pads. But despite his bad experience, I did like the 9.5 millimeter thickness of this pad, especially with my side sleeping habits. I've also used those older Thermarest self-inflating pads. And while I'm sure those have come a long way since I've used them last, the lack of thickness for me has definitely steered me clear of those. And while I've never used them because of the packability or lack thereof, uh, if you are not a fan of air pads, you can always use the Big Agnes Twister Cane or Thermarest Z-Lite options, which is essentially a foam pad. So the main theme I found in my comfort results was thickness. Because I tend to sleep on my side and have pointy hips, I need a thick pad to kind of conform to my anatomy. So I'd be totally fine sacrificing some extra weight or packability to accomplish this. And that's why I find myself taking the Neo Air over any of these pads in this group currently. So I obviously only covered a few pads here, but I'd love to hear from you all. What are your favorite options out there and why? Let me know in the comment section below. And if you like this video and wanna see more like it, please hit that subscribe button and notification bell and consider joining the Bikepacking Collective. Support from our members sustains this channel and everything we do at bikepacking.com. The Collective has a lot of perks, including the twice annual Bikepacking Journal, giveaways, and much more. So for more details, click on the card in the top right corner, or you can also find a link in the description below. As always, thank you all so much for watching, and until next time, pedal further.